492.7 miles squared is the area of Greater Manchester. Manchester City was once a town separate of both Castlefield and Trafford. It now stretches south to Widdenshaw, Farmway Fields until 1940, and North swallowing lots of southern Lancashire towns uh, from Bury to Rochdale, Oldham to Ashton the Line. They were all separate from Manchester before the Industrial Revolution. So today we're just going to put together some of the footage that I would originally call a pilot. So I'm just going to have a stroll along, finish off sort of this season's canals. This is what I'd normally call a pilot as I walk along. So the vast metropolis of Manchester exists simply because water flows naturally through its heart, pumping life into a coal burning cotton making revolution never before seen or equaled. The amount of things that were invented and created is totally like unprecedented worldwide ever since or still. Uh, that's why I feel it's worth filming and the best way to begin is follow the oldest canals. So this video began as a pilot, it has now become Ashton flat section and will be included as part of the playlist. From 1760 until 1810, all this was created from the Bridgewater and the boom of canal mania. Trains were not introduced until 1830s, like the late 1838, around that era where trains were you know, being used everywhere. The city as a whole has changed and from 1760 until 1800 um, the world was completely changed by some of the things that I'm going to mention as we walk along but still Manchester pioneers inventions by a Manchester University campus one of the largest student communities in the world of course we have successful sporting achievements and events there's arts theatre poetry even like the avengers movie had um some of its scenes were shot in the center of manchester it has a look of new york in a lot of the older back streets uh, i film and i can see where they're coming from uh, the steam coming out of the lot of the back of the buildings and they, they look like well, they are actually built pre-1900s in some of the best buildings in the world due to the Industrial Revolution. So it does actually match New York because that was a pioneering city around the same time. Uh, plenty of business owners uh, create new ideas in the city. So it's always got, you know, brand new ideas to make money say it had a look of New York's back streets, there's an international airport, um, there's plenty of hard workers to ensure the future of the most versatile of all British cities. There's also the television networks open a whole world of literally, you know, the future for generations to engage in. It, I, we can't even see how the future will go but it's a media, you know, future. Uh, there's a lot of expensive properties now available in the city centre. So it's up and onward and upward, it always has been. Even though it, it did suffer a great depression around the Second World War. Sort of a blip. It's gone, it's back on track, I'd say. Still got problems, but it's still a boom in town. Starting from Park Parade today, along the top of the Ashton. Park Parade Industrial Estate. It was formerly just Park Street and Margaret Street ran down to the canal and over it on the bridge. <clears throat> Excuse. As we walk from Portland Place 
toward Fairfield. To our right was the gasometers. There was some gasometers on Oxford Street and Oxford Street Mills were in that area. To the left would have been over the other side of the River Tame, Duckin Field Junction and Brookside Sidings. There's like eight to twelve tracks wide. It's still there, but there's not eight to twelve tracks still there. Had a similar problem in Castleton. Um, it didn't make much sense, but there was actually sixteen lines next to each other in Castleton. But it ended. It was one of the major train stations in the world, Castleton. Um, a lot of people don't realise that. They think it just had a train going through. It was the main where everything met before it even went into Manchester, over the Pennines, north to Scotland, south to London. It was a major hub, Castleton. So it's unclear that now because it's just got one train line like most places. So this was the same, Duckinfield Junction, Brookside Sidings. They joined Guide Bridge Junction. Past uh, it was Staley Bridge, it still is Staley Bridge. Uh, Lancashire North West Rail. Or London and North West Rail. I'm not sure, I didn't find that out. Uh, it's now Guide Lane anyway. Uh, it links Stockport Road, which linked to Hardinshaw Road in 1900 but now joins Lord Sheldon Way. Uh, we'll go under the bridge here, or around these areas, and it's next to the ring of the M60. You'll know when we go under that. Like I say, it's a pilot and it is now the full thing. You'll just, you will have to work it out. It's the longest one, quite cool. It goes dark and it's a very, long section over the canal which obviously is new because the canal is all this thing there uh, there's various docks i'm not going to explain each one would have had its own place for loading and unloading goods uh, railways are going to come in you see uh, miller and there were just roads all over so what I'm saying is, there's um, minor roads are over. Sorry, I'm driving my notes again. I do that, don't I? Not going to cut anything, as I said. Minor roads are over, and there's mill sites that are no longer in the area. And <laughs> I shouldn't write it so close together. And my handwriting's quite bad today. I'm actually, I do write all my own scripts and everything, even this and this has all been wrote down and that is true so the year 1759 and 1760 I'm gonna go back that far that's when they first built Bridgewater Canal It's when they first discovered a geological history of Earth. So it's the first sciences also at this time. H4 chronometer, the first practical device for calculating longitude at sea. So, as you know I wear glasses, I need my shades today. A lovely day. Uh, got some of the older sections. This is the Ashton Canal now. It's the Ashton Canal proper at the top section. We're into the older bits. I thought there wasn't much to see, but it's quite a nice section, so we'll get it. It's only a few miles long. So we're in between Portland Basin, Whitelands Basin at the top, down to Fairfield Basin. Go through Ardenshaw to Drylesden. Okay, and we get some of the old pathways and some of the older canal sections. 
and I put these on so I can see. Uh, Harrison's H4 chronometer is like a large pocket watch, like 12, 13 centimeters across and weighing 1.5 kilograms. So it's the first pocket watch chronometer. It's a large one, but it'll work at sea because you can wind it up. The problem of calculating longitude at sea was finally solved in 1759 with a highly accurate clock, a chronometer. Most people had assumed that such a clock would be large and complex. So that was Guide Bridge we went under. Uh, that I'm aware there's a boat behind us coming down. Uh, Guide Bridge Mill just over on the other bank. Not part of the older Guide Bridge Mill. Even has inlets at the bottom for water. And the more modern version up there. As we go down, we'll get the culverts for the most away. Um, some of the bridges. Okay, so we've got to um, do my best to edit people out today. It's quite a busy day, but it's a sunny day. It's like coming into autumn now. Do that, so it's a bit more personal, but I am buying. So, First culvert, part of the motorway, ring road, upgrade. It's actually a road, I think. So it's Oldham Road, Wharf. So, all the railway bridge behind us. This is the modern motorway culvert. We've got um, old railway bridge. It looked like here that used to cross the canal. That's where the culvert would end. You see, and back into the old section where all the bridge used to go over. Chop that bridge down. Wouldn't have built the brand new motorway, I assume. <laughs> complicated section to do near the Etihad Stadium and it's just here. I'm also sat on some black bricks. 
underneath the canal here, the Medlock flows somewhere, but it's underneath the whole sports city stadium. So those black bricks will have something to do with the Medlock. I would stake money on it that that was an old uh, civil engineer cover that went down. Yeah, down deep underground, you can see some old structures here. All this sort of stuff here, part of old mills. They've just left the retaining wall part of the car park, you see. Same here. Anyway, so you've got your modern Metrolink bridge, your modern road, Aston Road, your canal, and underneath a major river. Also, the Metrolink. A little bit further down, the Metrolink goes under the canal. Now, obviously, I can't film that for safety reasons. They won't let you just walk on the tracks. So I just thought I'd show you these complicated bits. It's not that complicated. It was just important. And we can say we've done it all. But what happens is you'll get the old Aston road bridge that's you know really old in the middle of it all which is this section and this is black brick you see which matches the black brick i was sat on which is my clue that it's part of the original sections yeah and then it's been widened you can see the steel that's where it was widened as the original ashton canal lock so that obviously goes up to Aston on the line. We jump down from the basins. Done the flat bit all along the top now. See black brick there too. Well, it's been extended. They've had to strengthen it. So I'm talking live because I know I do uh, edit videos, but I'm always doing it live. So that's my train that I'm missing there. I can hear. I might as well carry on filming. <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, the old fashioned section, and the black brick has been reused. And just after here, as I say, it plops down, and the Metrolink actually goes under the canal in a brand new underground tunnel. But we can't film that, so you just have to trust me. So, it's a lovely day, that's why I thought to film the extra sections, but we've got everything, I'd say, the major parts now. This is part of Sports City, uh, Manchester City Football Club as well. Yep. So, there's your modern Metrolink bridge, it has to be strong enough to hold the Metrolink, you see. It's a concrete and steel structure that can roll and expand in heat. And there's the old canal towpath stones. Okay, Manchester. I'm not going to go down and get the Metrolink. It's not really worth it because we can't see it. Um, there's an old house that I said. One of the videos we ended on an old house. I think it's 1863, somewhere around that age. <clears throat> uh, that's where the Metrolink passes underneath. And then the next thing that's really worth filming is Manchester City Centre. Um, one day, possibly when I do Peak District, I'll film all this extra section down into the town centre. We've pretty much filmed everything now for the Aston. It's out Manchester UK. Three videos a time. And Stephen got that. the arches and all the overflow down to the medlock.
Almost professional camera work these days. <laughs> I do say so myself. So a lot of people will not look at the camera and talk and be silent, but I don't know a squid. So this is more an experiment to see if I can do that sort of thing. And I should assume I can. Is all I've basically grabbed the microphone and camera and just set off one day. It turned out I could do this. There you go. Don't know you can do it till you try. Between 1730 and 1759, English clockmaker John Harrison had built three chronometers. All very accurate, but not accurate enough. Then Harrison realized the clock did not have to be big. In 1760, he built a chronometer the size of a pocket watch he called H4. It worked astonishingly well, losing just 5.1 seconds in a two month journey across the Atlantic. That was completed in 1761. Uh, as mariners sailed further, they brought exotic plants to Europe from across the globe. These were planted in newly created botanical gardens, such as Kew Gardens in London. Uh, it was greatly enlarged in 1760 by Augusta of Saxe Coburg, Princess of Wales, was a dowager, uh, and she obviously has invested in this, possibly for her own hobby. Uh, mariners sailing through the southern ocean brought back tales of giant icebergs, Russian polymast Mikhail Lomosov, Lomonos of, <laughs> forgive me there, suggested that must have formed on dry land and a continent as yet undiscovered, which later proved to be Antarctica. See where we're at? It's a very interesting time when the Bridgewater Canal is first made. The Industrial Revolution is about to explode. Manchester's just getting busy. But the science and study and investment in machinery is just, like I said before, it's unequaled. People, it's the age of discovery, the age of understanding. People want to know as much as they can about everything. And people are still quite ignorant <clears throat> to things even some people won't believe even still like that the earth is a sphere at this stage they'll still start you know there's no education as such people don't read and write regular um, anyway Charles Bonnet Charles Bonnet uh, lived his life in his hometown his studies included research on pathogenesis and insects uh, that's reproduction without sex basically uh, the discovery that caterpillars breathe through paws slugs actually breathe through gills that's why they slide along in the slime because they have to breathe the water underneath them a naturalist as well as a philosopher he also pioneered that the idea that the mind is a product of the physical brain you know, it's, we're not like ghosts in a shell the scientific procedures behind everything around us Charles Bonnet syndrome a condition in which people with poor eyesight are afflicted with hallucinations he observed the symptoms in his grandfather and suggested that the visualizations that the mind sees are generated the brain so I don't want to go into it I actually suffer from that personally um, you might know I wear glasses yeah um, I get kaleidoscopes sometimes in the corner of my eye where so the things that are down into the bottom corner of my vision if my eyes are strained from the glasses 
and it's obviously generated by the mind or the brain if it otherwise it'd be like a stroke um yeah so cars appear to sort of spin out of vision to the corner of my eyes and i'll get a kaleidoscope of color like a rainbow or a crystal it is awkward especially if you're working and it's rare i get it like twice a year maybe once a year So one of the milestones on the road to the Industrial Revolution was the establishment in 1761 of the Soho Manufacturer in Birmingham, that's in England. The brainchild of entrepreneur Matthew Bolton, the Soho factory pioneered the assembly line with mass production of cheap items such as buttons, buckles and boxes for the general public. It was here that British engineer James Watt's steam engines uh, were built just a few years later. An early patron of James Watt, Scottish chemist Joseph Black, 1728 to 1799, discovered one of the properties of heat. He found that much more heat is needed to melt ice than to warm ice. <laughs> uh, to warm ice cold water, sorry. So, the colder something is, the more heat you need to make it warmer. Which makes sense to us now, but that's what I'm saying, thermodynamics, it is actually called. It's the first laws of physics are thermodynamics. So the first things they start to suss out. Pressure makes things expand. That leads to steam engines, but let's carry on anyway. The discovery of the latent heat. Highlighting the difference between heat and temperature. That was fundamental to the modern understanding of energy. It also helped Watt to turn steam engine from an inefficient contraption to the powerhouse of the industrial age. In Sweden, chemist Johan Walrus Walrus showed how science could be applied to farming as well as to industry. His pioneering work on agricultural chemistry, the Agricultura Fundamenta Chemica, the natural and chemical elements of agricultural methods, basically. Uh, he discussed the most chemical components most conductive to plant growth. Meanwhile, another Swede, Johann Carl Wilke, designed receptible condenser, a device to generate static electricity. This is your basic first lesson in physics. It'll make your hair stand on end if you touch it. Generates electricity, basically, or proves the existence of electricity. Substances absorb or release heat when their physical state undergoes change. For a solid to melt to a liquid, it must absorb heat energy. And when a liquid freezes to a solid, it loses heat. This energy is called latent heat. Much more heat energy is needed to change solids to liquids and liquids to gases than to simply raise the temperature of a substance. Um, latent heat is also, like we've just said, is latent electricity, or static electricity. Uh, Johann Lambert published, uh, put forward his version of nebula hypothesis, <laughs> the nebula hypothesis, uh, sorry, theory that the solar system developed from a cloud of interstellar dust. English astronomer Thomas Wright and German philosopher Immanuel Kant independently proposed a similar theory. Lambert also suggested rightly that the Sun and nearby stars travel together as a group 
through what we now call the Milky Way, but it's a galaxy. All stars will circle their galaxy. There's billions and billions of galaxies in the universe. It's unknown how large the universe is. It's believed it is still expanding at a rate unprecedented. You would, if it's doubling in size every single day, and it is then double its size, it has to produce, you know, it's like bacteria, it has to be two, then four, then six, then eight. So the universe has to find matter from somewhere constantly. And that doubles at its own rate. No one knows what will happen to the universe in the long term. I suggest it's going to collapse in on itself, but who knows. Might just expand forever, or pop. But I don't think it can pop, because there's no pressure outside of it. Or time. So it would have to implode. There you go. Told you I know about physics. So anyway, take care Manchester. That's just an introduction into, that's the prequel to the Industrial Revolution. And when I come back with my next canals and things, I will talk about the Industrial Revolution from, we got up to like the year 1763. A British clergyman Edward Stone discovered the medicinal properties of willow bark. I'm sure you're all on the edge of your seats, so you'll have to just stay tuned. I'll be back very soon. Take care, everybody. You know, be safe with the coronavirus. So this is Manchester, UK. Brief videos of time. Stephen Goddard. Thanks for watching my videos, I hope you've enjoyed them, please like them if you do, there's lots of stuff to be getting on with during the winter. Um, for you to, you know, scan through. Take care, peace out. See the arches and all the overflow down to the medlock. It's